Today I am going to be talking through the production of our film magazine front cover for Sight and Sound. Um, this is the image we started off with, which is going to be the central image. Um, it was originally in colour, but by adjusting the levels and the filter, we changed it to black and white. We also added um, high contrast to the image, just so that it stood out and it was really eye-catching to the audience. Um, we then highlighted the smoke and the um, just this area down here, just so that the image was stood out more and the smoke was really prominent because smoke is one of the key conventions of noir and it suggests like mystery. And also by having it covering half of his face, it kind of masks him and suggests that he may be hiding something. We then created a vignette effect around the photo. Um, this is because Neo Noir utilises low key lighting and chiaroscoto lighting. Um, so we thought that it was key to include this in our magazine front cover because it grounds the genre of the, um, of the image into Neo Noir. Um, although our image uses low key lighting already, we decided to mask half of his face in darkness. We did this by creating a shadow using the colour fill. Um, by having this, it suggests that he's got two sides to himself and that it's kind of a battle between good and bad, which is a key convention of Neo Noir. On Sight and Sound, they often have a block of text at the bottom of their front covers telling, them, telling the audience what is in the um, magazine. So starting off, we just put text onto our um, photo. We used um, the same colours that Sight and Sound use, which is red and white. We use these colours just so that the audience know it's sight and sound and that it kind of conforms to what they usually do and the conventions of their magazine. Um, we also then added yellow bullet points because that's again what they do on their front cover. We then added uh, underhand his noir masterpiece. This shows to the audience what the main image is about and what film it's from. It also suggests that he is not starring in the film, that he has actually created it, which suggests he's the director. This is We wanted to put this across because if you're not an audience of Sight and Sound, you may get a bit confused because um, Sight and Sound usually include directors and um, main actors, but other magazines just use main actors. So we just want to make this clear. We then added his name. We used... Um, capitalised bold font just so that it stood out on the magazine and it was one of the first things that the audience saw and knew that it was who he was and knew about his film. We then added the Sight and Sound logo. We got this image off um, Google Images but we made sure that it was a high resolution so that it was not blurred. We then added a little circle in the bottom right hand corner is here which is red and has white capitalized bold font on it um, every single one of sight and sounds magazines contains one of these little stickers so we thought it was key that we had to include this and we used it in red again because of the red in the um, title and just down here um, like any other magazine um, sight and sound you use a barcode and a price this is just to the right of the magazine so that it's easy to be seen and unlike books, film magazines use um, their barcodes on the front of the um, magazine so it's a key thing for us to include in the production of it. We then added the uh, volume number and the issue number which we put, it was released in February 2016, volume 4, issue 1. This was just because it's convention of magazine front covers and it just tells the audience when it was released and what issue and volume it was from. We then lastly added the BFI logo. This is because they are the publishers of Sight and Sound and yet again a convention of the Sight and Sound front covers is that logo because it just tells the audience um, that it's a reputable film magazine.